we're not ready for the next epidemic. Let's look at Ebola. I'm sure all of you read about it in the newspaper.、Uh, lots of tough challenges. I followed it、uh, carefully through the、uh, case analysis tools we use to track polio eradication. And as you look at what went on, the problem wasn't that there was a system that didn't work well enough. The problem was that we didn't have a system at all. In fact, there are some pretty obvious、uh, key missing pieces. We didn't have a group of epidemiologists ready to go who would have gone, seen what the disease was, see how far it had spread.、Uh, the case reports came in on paper.、Uh, it was very delayed before they were put online, and they were extremely inaccurate. We didn't have a medical team ready to go. We didn't have a way of preparing people. Now, Medicine Sans Frontieres did a great job orchestrating volunteers, but even so, we were far slower than we should have been getting the thousands of workers into these countries. And a large epidemic would require us to have hundreds of thousands of workers. There was no one there to look at treatment approaches. Uh, no one to look at the diagnostics. No one to, to figure out what tools should be used. As an example,、uh, we could have taken the blood of survivors, processed it, and put that plasma back in people to protect them,、uh, but that was never tried. So there was a lot that was missing, and these things are really a global failure. The WHO is funded to monitor epidemics, but not to do these things I talked about. Now in the movies, it's quite different. There's a group of handsome epidemiologists <laughs> ready to go. They move in, they save the day, but that's just pure Hollywood. The failure to prepare could allow the next epidemic to be dramatically more devastating than Ebola. Let's look at the progression of Ebola over this year. About 10,000 people died, and nearly all were in the three West African countries. There's three reasons why it didn't spread more. The first is there was a lot of heroic work by the health workers; they found the people and they prevented more infections. The second is the nature of the virus. Ebola does not spread through the air, and by the time you're contagious, most people are so sick that they're bedridden. Third, it didn't get into many urban areas, and that was just luck.、Uh, if it had gotten into a lot more urban areas,、uh, the case numbers would have been much larger. So next time we might not be so lucky.、Uh, you can have a virus where people feel well enough while they're infectious that they get on a plane or they go to a market. The source of the virus could be a natural epidemic like Ebola, or it could be bioterrorism. And so there are things. That would literally make things a thousand times worse. In fact, let's look at a model of a virus、uh, spread through the air、uh, like the Spanish flu、uh, back in 1918. So here's what would happen: it would spread throughout the world very, very quickly, and you can see there's over 30 million people die from that epidemic. So this is a serious problem. We should be concerned. But in fact, we can build. A really good response system. We have the benefits of all the science and technology that we talk about here. We've got cell phones to get information from the public and get information out to them. We have satellite maps where we can see where people are and where they're moving. We have advances in biology that should dramatically change the turnaround time to look at a pathogen and be able to make drugs and vaccines that fit for that、uh, pathogen. So we can have tools, but those tools need to be put into an overall global health system, and we need preparedness.